Welcome to ADHD Whiskey. If you're new here, my name is Matt. Today, we're taking six bottles of bourbon whiskey under 25 bucks. We're gonna mix them up and blind taste them and tell you which one sucks the least. Which one is the best? What is the best bourbon under 25 bucks that I have here in my garage? First things first, let's mix up these glasses. The Julie-like wheel of confusion has never been loaded with cheaper booze. But I suppose I should still be careful while spinning it. Totally confused. No idea which one is which. Before I tell you which bottles are in this blind flight competing for the best $25 bottle of bourbon tonight, let me first tell you about today's video sponsor, Tish Hanley. As men, we are complicated beings. We are so complex. The things we do are a bit confusing. For example, we'll wash our balls after every time we play with them. But taking care of our skin is like too complicated. Well, not anymore. Tish Hanley is uncomplicated skincare for men. If you wanna look sharp and feel confident, then enhancing your awesome is just one click away. And using Tiege Hanley will only take a couple minutes a day. The first thing you notice when you open the box is this, a card telling you exactly how to use your Tiege Hanley skincare system. Their level one system comes with a wash, a scrub, and AM and PM moisturizers. If this dry winter air has hit you like it's hit me, these moisturizers will keep your skin from being dry and flaky. The level three system like I use includes this, a super serum. The ladies will be squirming when they notice your face is firming. And it also includes the AM PM eye cream, which helps with my dark circles after a long night editing. Tish Hanley is helping men look and feel amazing. And since they're sponsoring this video, they're offering my viewers 30% off their first order plus a free gift. So do yourself and your skin a favor. Click on the first link in the description below, head on over to Tiege Hanley, and start taking care of your largest organ, your skin. Now that we've talked about today's video sponsor, let's talk about the six bourbons that are in this six-way bourbon skirmish competing for the best bourbon under 25 bucks. In glass A, Kirkland Bottled and Bond. In glass B, Evan Williams, 1783. This is the American Heroes edition, so you know it's good. In Glass C is the tried and true Wild Turkey, 101. In Glass D, Early Times, Bottled and Bond. In Glass E, Old Grandad, Bonded. And in Glass F, Benchmark, Bonded. I believe that the full benchmark lineup would have fit this category of bourbons under $25, but I only wanted to pick one. I was tempted to put the benchmark full proof in this blind flight, but I figured that at 120 proof, it would stick out like a sore thumb. So instead I opted for the bonded version. Do I expect any of these to blow my mind apart? No, but a few of these could be pretty sneaky good. Let's go to the first blind pour. All right, glass number one on the nose. Hmm cherries and char and very surprising this doesn't smell like a 25 dollars whiskey at all this smells delicious yeah it's a layered complex nose for a 25 dollars whiskey glass one is very wood chippy a little bit of sawdust and a lot of nuttiness it is rather oily and the finish goes on for a while. I don't typically absolutely adore nutty bourbons, but I gotta say for a $25 pour, I could sip on that. I could sip on that and not be mad. Glass number two. Glass number two is a very different animal altogether. Seemingly sweeter. It had a very prominent sweet cherry note at first, but the more I nose it, the more nutty it's getting. There seems to be like a grape Jolly Rancher note on the nose of this glass number two as well. Overall, super impressed with the nose. Now let's go for a taste. Mm. Glass two was a bit thinner. It wasn't as full flavored as full bodied, but 
It was sweet, some underlying oak notes, a dab of nuttiness, but not like extra nutty. And overall, I would say very pleasing a very pleasing pour for glass number two. So far, we're two for two. I would drink both of those. Glass three. Ooh. Glass three has a heavy toffee note on it. A very heavy toffee note. It's like a score candy bar. Again, for a $25 bottle of bourbon, very impressed with the nose of this. And if the palate lives up to the nose, then we're gonna be three for three. And we are three for three. That is also an excellent port for only 25 bucks. Wow, um, glass three was very good, yet different. It didn't seem to have the layered flavors that glass one had, but it offered a different palette entirely. Glass four. Glass four is also sweet smelling, but probably has the least amount of, I don't know, smell coming out of the glass. If you could measure aroma in numbers, then this glass would have the least amount of numbers. Glass number four is the first glass out of the four that has some youthful characteristics associated with it. Some like corn grain is like being pronounced like very specifically like corn, corn, country of origin, corn. It did seem a bit thinner than some of the other glasses and with that youthful aspect, it might find itself towards the bottom of the list. Now glass five. Ooh. Glass five has a hint of smoke attached to it. This kind of smells like a pink starburst. Remember the pink ones? They're so good. A pink starburst version of bourbon. Glass five smells alive, alive with hope. It is kind of amazing the quality of bourbon you can get for 25 bucks. Glass five down the hatch. A bit corny, a bit nutty. It doesn't quite have the amount of wood chips that glass number one had, but it kind of reminds me of that sweet nutty profile that glass number one had, minus the wood chips. I call that the sawdust note. And now finally glass six. Ooh. Glass six has a little bit of marshmallow attached to it. A very s'mores-like aroma is coming out of the glass. A bit of graham, a bit of marshmallow, a bit of milk chocolate you could say and like a perfectly cooked mallow also, not a burnt one. Like a very patient person, probably a mother, slowly roasted the marshmallow. Glass six down the hatch. Not necessarily my favorite of the flight, but the most interesting thing of the flight is these are not losers, they're all winners. The thing with $25 bourbons are like, some people buy them and drink them. Some people buy them as mixers. Some people buy them, taste them, and just leave them on the shelf. As a whiskey reviewer, that's kind of what happens for me as I buy these cheaper whiskeys and they kind of sit around. But this is a real eye-opener because going back to these, it's like, wow. If I weren't such a pretentious a-hole, I could see myself sipping on some of these. These bottles will just get tossed aside for 2025 when I make another one of these videos saying, what's the best whiskey under $25 in 2025? Oh, maybe that's the story of this video. Maybe that's the title. The best $24 bourbon in 2024. <laughs> Friggin' nailed it. We just renamed this video the best $24 bourbon in 2024. Are all of these bottles $24? Today they are. Your market may vary. Wherever you live could vary. But in this video, all of these cost $24 because it just makes sense and makes a good title of a video. After tasting back through them and thinking extra hard about it, we've come up with a porter order. And speaking of porter order, porter's reminding you to click on the first link in the description below so that you can save 30% off your Tiege Hanley purchase and get a free gift. Now it's time to reveal the best $24 bourbon in 2024. In sixth place was glass number four, F, which is benchmark bonded. In fifth place was glass number five. And glass number five is letter A. 
Kirkland, bottled in bond. In fourth place was a glass that I really enjoyed, but it was a bit thinner and lower proof than the others. And I can already kind of sort of guess what this is because there was only one bourbon in this lineup that wasn't 100 or 101 proof. So in fourth place was glass number two. And glass number two was sample B. Belongs to Evan Williams 1783, the Heroes Edition. And earning the bronze medal for best $24 bourbon in 2024 is glass C, which is, oh. Wild Turkey 101 in third place. In second place was the very first glass I tasted. Out of all of these, glass number one was the fullest flavored, most full bodied, most layered tasting experience. I almost put this in first place, but I hemmed and hawed, and I decided that the flavor profile on glass number three was more exciting and made me happier. Made me happier. And glass one, the runner up, is in glass labeled E, which is OGD, the runner up which makes Early Times Bottled and Bond the winner. Early Times Bottled and Bond sneaks past Old Grandad Bottled and Bond, or Old Grandad Bonded if you want to get extra super specific about its label, and sneaks past Wild Turkey 101 to take the crown, to take the title, to take the winner, the winning, the number one in first place. Early Times Bottled and Bond Black Plastic Screw Cap takes the cheese takes the cake of best $24 whiskey or bourbon in 2024. Anyway, that's going to do it for this blind flight. Hit the thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. What bottle did I leave out of this flight that should have been in the flight? What sub $25 bottle should I have put in here? And if I were to do this flight again, what bottle should I run out and purchase? Hopefully my focus on value was of some value to you. Again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Matt. This is ADHD Whiskey. Like I always say, keep your head in the clouds, but your mind on bowling strikes in life. Has Matt bowled all strikes in life? No. Lots of gutters, in fact. But if I leave a couple of pins, I try to pick up that spare, and that's what's most important. No one's going to remember you for being perfect. No one's ever going to say, oh, he never screwed up. Nobody will remember you for the things you got right the first time. What you're going to be remembered for is the extra effort you put in to make sure things are right, to make things correct. When you left that 10 pin over and over again, and nobody thought that you could pick it up, and you did, that's what you'll be remembered for, for the hard work and dedication and extra effort you put in. Of course, getting things right the first time is like the best case scenario. But when that metaphorical ball misses the pocket in real life, practice those spares so that you don't leave any open frames, if you know what I mean. And if that don't make sense, then we're on the same page because I'm not quite sure where I was going with that. But I think I wrapped it up nicely. I think I put a nice little button on the end of it. Nice little bow. I don't know.